Well, hello my fabulous friends and welcome to yet another video on this fabulous channel. We are talking today flesh and blood and what I will be getting to is my take on the economics of flesh and blood, a few announcements, some news and so on and so forth. But before I do that, I would just like to make a special shout out to all of those of you who are new to this channel, many subscribers in the past few days. And um, by the way, if you are not already a subscriber of this channel, it's very easy to do so. You just click that little red box in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and you will not miss another episode from now on. By the way, quick update of what's going on with our contest. Let's get to a thousand. We have, I think, just four of you who have participated already. I thought maybe there would be more of you. We need, at least need 25, 30 people that are actively going to participate in this contest. Um, the update so far is that I have um, Frostito with one new member. I have uh, JP Marois with uh, seven or eight, I believe. Uh, Andrea Spinelli is around at 12. And our leader right now with 18 new subscribers is Fatal Injury. So there you go for the update. Congratulations for what you've done so far. And let's keep going. Let's do it, as we say. Now, what's going on here in Canada this week? We are getting our second shipment of Arcane Rising. If your local game store was not able to supply you with what you needed in the first place, what you ordered initially, they should be able to do so within the next few days. We are not getting any more Crucible of War here in Canada. But I know that uh, a lot of you around the world and a lot of you from Europe and elsewhere are following this channel. So you guys are, are getting your uh, latest shipments of Crucible of War. And for that reason, I just wanted to go over today the cold foil promos that you might be getting with those boxes. So let me show you what the, those are. They're basically the promos numbered 9, 10, 11, and 12. So the first one is Teclo Plasma Pistol. So there you go, what it looks like. This is uh, one of the promo cards that you may be getting. They are, they are by the way, all uh, cold foils. Death Dealer is the next card, promo card number 10. So this is it, as you can see, nice cold foil. Nebula Blade is the next one, so here we go. This could also be a card that is uh, supplied to you for buying a box, or maybe a little more because they're getting so few of these that they might be handing them out to people that are buying four boxes or more, I don't know. Anyway, and uh, the last one is Crucible of Aetherweave, which looks like so. So there you go for all our updates. And now let's get to the main subject of the day, the economics of flesh and blood. All right, so the economics of the game will probably be a broad subject for me that I would like to um, take up at least once a week or maybe every other week, something like that. And uh, today I just wanted to get started with an ad lib session, if you will, and uh, just basically tell you what I think is going on right now. I mean, it's crazy uh, what you can see in terms of the prices of the uh, booster boxes, especially if you have a look on eBay and you type in Welcome to Wraith uh, Alpha Edition or even Arcane Rising First Edition, you will see that uh, the prices have exploded. Now, I'll get back to that. But uh, first of all, let me just say that for me, there's in any collectible there are three types of people right there are those who actually want to play the game are fans of the game and are wouldn't care less about the value of the cards they're just in it for the game period and then you have people of my style that would like to do both like i mean i want to know the game i like to play it it is a very fun game but i'm also a collector at heart right so i want to have the cards as a collection and that part is very important to me. There's that type of people. And then there's a the type of per people that collect basically to speculate. Now, so that's three types. And each, I feel, have their very important role to play in, um, in the overall aspect and of what's going on. Because for the, let me just say this. I mean, for the game to be popular, there has to be obviously players and people that are you know, thrilled with the game and so on and so forth. You also need for there to be a demand for the cards and for the product. You also need people that want to collect. And believe it or not, speculators are not that bad for anybody because they tend to drive the prices up. Not that that's necessarily important, but as a collector, you also like to, everything intertwines, you know. As a collector, you also like to know that whatever products you have, have value, you know, even though, 
I know for me, I mean, I'll collect sealed and open products, single cars also, uh, with never the intention of selling them back. I just like to own, to collect, and I'm the true collector. But let's say I compare this to the stock market. You know, um, I've been on the stock market for long enough to know that you have the people, you know, the, the, the players, or let's say the people that are in there for the long haul, for the long run, most of the times by ETFs, electronically traded funds, are cheaper and they're in there for the long run. But then you have the speculators, like the day traders, and if it weren't for them, I mean, our, um, our investments would not go up as much, right? In the stock market I'm talking about. Um, for the simple reason that uh, if we were to base ourselves on price to earning ratios, for those of you who are investors, you know, on the stock market, what I'm talking about, PE ratios of 15 in general. If we were to buy companies and companies would uh, keep uh, the value of their shares would uh, follow that 15 price to earning ratio, then things would be very slow. You know, things wouldn't happen very fast. But fortunately, there are speculators out there that make the value go up in price and uh, appreciate fair, a fair amount. And it's the same thing. I'm, I'm just using an analogy here. It's the same thing with, uh, with any collectible, whether it's stamps or coins or flesh and blood. You know, it is a collectible, a TCG game in this case. But, um, uh, but, but yeah, so it is important to have that because, as I said, I'll give you another example. I mean, uh, Magic the Gathering, I'm a collector, and it is fun to have all the cards, have everything that comes out. But on the other hand, knowing that your most expensive card is only worth 20 or 30 or $40 is not fun. I mean, <laughs> that's the way it is. It's uh, you like to have cards that are worth a thousand dollars, six six thousand dollars, two thousand, you know, whatever. It, it is like part of the fun of collecting, and oftentimes you even, when a card has good value, you're even out there to go buy it because it's missing from your collection. So there's there's a, how can I say? There's a incentive to to go out and look for it and want the card, and that creates demand, and you know, all of this is good. This is what I'm basically saying. It's uh. I think the uh, the owners, the people at uh, at Flesh and Blood, I think they will not make that, at least I hope not, make the same mistake that other games have done, and we're not going to mention any names, uh, like reprinting cards or making, uh, how can I say, we're getting the un unlimited versions, and that is perfect, because you want people that are in it for just the game to be able to play those top cards also. But what I mean is that it is fun for everyone to have those cards that, they have the same mechanic, it's the exact same card, but on the one hand, it's worth $20, $30 because it's an unlimited version or because it's non-foil. And then you have the, um, let's say I'm thinking of here, of Command & Conquer here, $20, $30 card, but if you put it in its foil version, it's worth all of a sudden $250, you know? So you don't need to pay $250 to be able to play that card, but uh, for a collector, he wants the foil version because it's a kind of a pride to have that card. So if you don't want to kill the market, and I hope the people at Flesh and Blood won't do that, is that you got to make sure that you satisfy all categories. You need the players to be satisfied. You need the collectors to be satisfied. And and the I guess the speculators are just there to, to, to make a buck, basically. But, I mean, we would tend to not like what they're doing, driving up prices, but on the other hand, it feeds the others also, you know? Um, especially collectors like myself. Like I said, I do like to know that I have cards that have value, not to resell them, just because I love owning them. I mean, I've had things since I, uh, I'm probably gonna come back to you on another video. Uh, I've had, uh, since I was eight years old, stamps. Uh, 1977 is when I started collecting. That's 23, that's 43 years ago. And I still own them. I mean, they went up in value 20 times, 30 times. But I don't sell. I mean, I don't want the money. I want to have the product. I want the stamps, right? Uh, but then again, always fun to know that you have the value. It's like putting, not putting all your eggs in the same basket principle, you know? Um, yeah. All right. So I started this segment by mentioning those uh, crazy prices for uh, the first two sets on uh, eBay and even Crucible of War, the third set, basically prices are going kaboom, um, quadrupled basically from a hundred to three, four hundred dollars now. But um, what I wanted to say is that the um, the unlimited versions, however, of the first two sets have brought the prices down, uh, stabilized them at least in terms of the uh, 
the singles, but uh, because they're the same cards and the only differences are, you know, those cold foils, they were cold foils in the first sets, in the first versions, and they are rainbow foils and uh, all the other cards are the same. Well, for collectors out there, they are not. Uh, let me just say that, well, first of all, I will show you that eventually in another video. I don't want things to run too much here, but I do have <clears throat> five uh, binders right now. Uh, I have my binders for each of the first sets, the Crucible of War, and my binder for each of the two unlimited versions. So we're up basically five sets. For me, although it's Welcome to Wraith, there are two different Welcome to Wraiths, and there are two different Arcane Risings also. And why do I say that? Now we're basically like, within the same year all these cards are coming out. But as a collector, 10, 15 years down the road, if flesh and blood um, proliferates and becomes a standard, becomes an icon, and one of those big four with Pokemon and Magic the Gathering and uh, whatever others there are out there, well, eventually there will be a separation. They are not the same cards. Alpha uh, version cards are printed in 2019. They are identified by a letter, not with a circle uh, gray colored or red colored for the Majestics and so on and so forth. So although they're they are the same cards mechanically, um, I can tell you as a collector, and I know all of, a lot of you out there are like that, they, they are different and um, very important to own those first cards. So although if you look at certain sites, they just mix them up. I mean, you, you look up prices and they're, they're all the same, whether it's from the alpha version or from the unlimited set. If they're not those top cards, the coal foils and the, uh, and the promo cards and the whatever, if they're not those special cards, just the regular rares or let's say uh, even commons, um, they're all listed as being equivalent. Well, they are for now, but eventually they will not. They're, they are not the same cards. But then again, that is the perspective of the collector. Now, which brings me back to the perspective of the player who is just as happy to see that he can play all the cards uh, because they do have a, uh, they're affordable because in the, like I was mentioning before, in its unlimited version. But I think all of this goes back to the fact that the people at uh, Flesh and Blood have been very smart so far in um, creating, um, exclusivity in products for uh, in terms of the alpha versions and the first uh, edition versions and then having the uh, cards available made available in the unlimited versions and that that is perfect I mean we're satisfying everybody that way and uh, I think that the future of the game not only depends on the playability and the fun that uh, people will have playing flesh and blood but also uh, it is healthy to have a good secondary market. And I think they realize that. So far, uh, thumbs up to them. I mean, things have been going uh, very well. I think all the right decisions are being made. Just my opinion, by the way, and I can babble on and go on with this uh, uh, for a long time. But uh, so far, I think uh, uh, everything has been done right. I hope that mistakes will not be made in the future. Like, I uh, will not mention any names, but reprinting old cars like five years down the road. Um, which would kill markets. Uh, I don't think they are going to do that. They have uh, a couple of uh, other examples to follow, and I don't think they will make the same mistake. Anyway, those are just personal opinions for now. I just want to keep it at that to, for today. I will be coming back, like I said before, with uh, other, uh, other videos on uh, this very precise segment of the economics of flesh and blood. So until then, don't forget to uh, like if you have liked, subscribe if you haven't already done so. We're looking for those thousand subscribers. I want to uh, have some great contests once we get there. And uh, until next time, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye for now.